All right, hello everyone, Doug with TheLincolnList.com. I wanna welcome you back to another whiteboard lesson. Today what I'd like to talk about are five things that you must do every day after market closes to make yourself a better trader. And I mean no excuses must do because this is where it gets dirty. This is where we get down to the deepest and darkest secrets and we find our inner being and what makes us tick. As they say, the money's made from behind the scenes, right? Well, that was a little dramatic, but anyway, we are gonna talk about that and some good tips on just how you can prepare yourself better for the next day, because the things that you do in the evening really pay dividends the next day. Now, I'm also gonna Quentin Tarantino you guys here. Normally, when I do a numerical list, obviously, I put them in numerical order, but we're gonna start in the middle, then we're gonna work our way up back to the top, and then we're gonna slide on back down to the end and finish it. So I'm gonna start out with number two, and number two may seem kind of obvious, but that's called the review. Of course, you want to review your body of work for that day. You want to look back through your trades. You want to see the good and the bad and the things that you can do better. That's very, very important. However, what I highly recommend, which we will make number one, before you do this, I would like for you to take a small break of some sort, just to clear your mind. Now you gotta understand if you're like me, you're getting up a couple of hours every day before the market opens. Market trading hours are roughly six to six and a half hours. So you're kind of grinding it out through those six, seven hours, and then you're doing a little bit of study and this kind of work in the evening. So it doesn't take much of that to wear down on your brain and get you confused. Also, as you're working throughout the day, trading is all about emotion. Some days you have some really good days where your P&L looks fantastic and you're proud to be a trader. Then there's other days you're embarrassed to even call yourself the trading word because your P&L looks horrible and you can't do anything right. The reason I'm saying this is I wanna look at my review and I wanna be as objective as possible with it. So I like to clear my mind for a little bit just to get the emotions to settle down, just to kinda of unwind, go take a hike, walk around the neighborhood, watch TV program, take a nap, whatever it is, but just let your mind set back from the computer before you come and take a look at your trading review. Now, when we talk about review, one thing I wanna make very, very clear to those, especially those who may be struggling with trading, is that we've talked about this before. Just because you had a winning day doesn't mean that was a fantastic trading day. And just because you had a losing day doesn't make it a bad day. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, every trader, we've also talked about this before, has a process. You have some form of selecting the stocks that you do, and you have some form of having an indicator or something that gives you a green light to take a trade. We've already gone through that. Every trader needs that process. To, to be successful, period. And the important things that we're looking for when we go back through a review is not whether you made money or not. It's whether you followed your game plan. So for example, maybe you were 0-3 on the day. You didn't win on any trade and your P&L is in the red and you're a little upset about it. But when you look back through your review, you realize that, hey, these were all game plan trades. I rehearsed all these trades. These are all part of my process. They just didn't work. That's fine, you should be very happy with it. And that's why I say take a break because you want to have that objective view when it comes to looking at your trades. You should be happy with that as well because over time, you're gonna be just fine if you follow your game plan. On the flip side of that, you may have made a good amount of money, but you also may realize during your review, you got lucky. Maybe you were getting schooled or smoked on a stock and a PR came out or a buyout chatter came out or a tweet came by and saved the day for you and you ended up with a really, really nice game, but you knew that you did a really bad job. You chased the stock, maybe you got away with it, but these are the things that we're trying to look for when we go through the review. So I like to look at the good things and the bad things that I did and then I'll go from there. But before I do that, remember number one, let's take a little bit of a break. Let your mind unwind before you start going into reviewing your trades. The next thing to do is I wanna set up my scans. I wanna look at opportunities for the following day. Remember when the market opens, it's gonna be hectic. There's gonna be a lot of stuff going on. So it helps during the evening to scan the stocks that you want. Now most traders already know this. The depressing thing about it and the reason it becomes difficult to continue and be consistent with this is because 95, more than that, probably 95% or more of all the stuff you scan never comes into play the next day. 
This is just what it takes to be a trader. This is where other traders fail while others, others succeed because they're willing to do the work that other traders won't. And it's frustrating sometimes to look through 100 to 200 charts at a night, just trying to find maybe one opportunity. And then the next day you realize none of them panned out. Again, don't get disappointed in that because this is what it takes to be a trader. So you're going to have to scan through those stocks. Now, what I like to do is get myself about a handful of maybe four to eight opportunities. I kind of listed trades, but they're not trades. So four to eight opportunities. I want to narrow it down to four or eight charts that I kind of like carrying those over into the next day. And then of course, when the pre-market comes, I'll narrow that down even more. But I like to just get a benchmark of a good four to eight stocks that I want to trade and set up alerts on these trades and, and, and kind of set up the idea on it. And if you're new, it even helps to write out the trade. So saying that you're gonna buy a breakout if it hits 50, if it bounces off a of VWAP, you write this down. So you follow that plan, especially if you're new the next day. That helps you be a little bit more successful. Number four, I'm going to say pick one. And I don't mean pick one stock, but during all of this, especially your review, you're going to realize there's some things that you need to work on, no matter how good your trading is. You always need to work on something. What a problem I had a lot when I was new is I tried to fix everything. And I tried to climb Mount Everest in one afternoon. I just tried to fix it all the next day. And again, you're asking a lot out of yourself. What really made a difference is just picking one thing to work on the following day. So when you look through these results and, and you realize, you know what, I'm chasing stocks. I'm getting terrible entries. Or maybe you say to yourself, you know what, I'm just getting whipsawed. I'm just getting stopped out too soon. I must not be reading these charts right. Or I must not be seeing something right. Or you know what, I'm leaving an awful lot of money on the table. Rather than try to fix all of that at one time, just pick one thing. So for example, if it's just leaving money on the table, that's all I want to work on the next day is try to be more patient with those trades. I'm going to try to take more time. If it's exits, or I mean, excuse me, then I'm going to just try to pay attention to that. Once I've gotten back into a rhythm of getting great entries or getting great exits, then of course I'll just conquer the next problem. That's as simple as that. But just pick one thing that you want to work on and then go from there. And last, of course, is chill out. Chill out, man, especially new guys, because you just want to eat this market alive. You just want to study, because you always see that stuff. They even got a hashtag, right? Hashtag on social media. Hashtag study. Study, 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 study. I mean, you can only study so much before you're going to crisp out your brains. If you're my age, you just lose it, you know, after a couple of hours. You don't want to wear yourself down. Longevity is very important, and you got to pace yourself in trading. I've often referred to trading as a lifestyle. And this is what I mean. If you get up like I do, a typical day for me is 5 a.m. Pacific time. And I'll do a couple hours of pre-market. Market opens at 6.30. Then I'll trade from 6.30 to 1. Then I'll take my break. I'll do my review this last tool about 3. And then, of course, I'll do my watch list and other things for the trade room and answer my emails. I'm living in this trading bubble. I'm in this whole universe of trading. It is a lifestyle. I live everything. I'm not going to read any trading book at night. You know, I'll save that for the weekend when I do read. I've got to be honest with you. I don't often read. That's probably obvious. But again, what I'm saying is pace yourself. Of course, you want to study, but you want to make sure that, you know, you're doing the right things and you're not burning yourself out. Because if you, if you try to do too much, too fast, you don't have a plan. These are the little small details that really mess traders up and cause them to lose money. And that's what I'm trying to keep you from doing is losing money. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up right there. I hope some of these help you just become a better trader. Now, there's certainly other things that you can do post-market, but I think this is a great benchmark of the things that you should be doing to just get yourself in the right mind frame to be successful and get yourself a good game plan for the next day. Now, if you're struggling with that, you need some help, you're just struggling overall with trading. You need a good community. Take a moment, visit the Lincoln list, take a free trial to the live trade room. Until the next whiteboard, thank you very much for watching this one. Talk to you guys soon.